One of the most challenging aspects of a distributed application that has different services, all that own their own data, is composing that data. So we're looking at just a sample of Amazon here. Let's say, well, we have the, the name of the product, kind of the description, the details of it. Maybe that's owned by one service. We have the price, which is probably owned by something completely separate. We have a whole rating and review system that's owned probably in its own separate service. Shipping information on when can we actually ship this out? When would it actually get delivered? As well, how many people have actually ordered this? There's a lot of information here coming from a lot of different services. Hey, this is Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com, and this is easily one of the most common questions I get related to this topic of how do I do this composition? How do I get data all in the same place? I need all this data. Well, you have a few different options, but of course, they all have some trade-offs. What developers generally want is to make this as simple as possible. That request comes in, they want to have all the data in their local database available to them, all of it, within their own local boundary, within their service. That means that they have all the data available to them. They don't need to call out another service. They have it all right there. It's simple. But it's not that simple because we can't just make a single call. Now we need to make multiple calls because we have data everywhere behind these services. We need to call the catalog service to get the name, the description, sales to get the pricing information, reviews to get the total number of reviews and the rating, shipping information to see whether we can actually ship this and when it might be delivered. We have to get this data from everywhere and do this composition. There's gotta be a different way to do this, and there is, but before I get to it, I'd like to thank Current for sponsoring this video. Current's an event-native data platform that feeds real-time business-critical data with historical context and fine-grained streams from origination to destination, enhancing data analytics and AI outcomes. For more on Current, check out the link in the description. So I can feel like a pain, it seems difficult to have to call these different services. So how do we deal with this composition? How do we do it? We got all these different services that have all this data, how do we do this composition? What's our options? Well, the first option is, and you probably don't want to hear this, is doing exactly what I was illustrating. Do that composition by calling an API that you're exposing to fetch data from each different service. Now, that composition where that needs to happen at doesn't need to be, for example, your front end. It could be something intermediate that's specifically for this. But there are alternatives, and there are different ways that you can do this, but they all have trade-offs. There's really nothing simple here. It's about where you want to do that composition. So let's get into another alternative. It's about doing pre-computation so we kind of have a model of data already ready for when a request comes in. We don't, at runtime, have to do all that composition. So I'm going to illustrate this with event sourcing. And this does not require event sourcing. I'm just illustrating it. So we have some events that come in, like in our warehouse, a product received. So we received 10 products of a particular SKU, for example, of a specific item. Then they say we receive five more. So now we have 15 in our warehouse of that particular product. Say it's the stapler. Then we've shipped out six. So now we have nine products available in our warehouse. And then we do some stock count. We realize, hey, there's actually a box of 50 of them back there. So now technically we have 59 of that quantity on hand of that stapler. Now again, you do not need event sourcing, but I'm just trying to illustrate that if you use events and a series of events, you can transform that into current state into kind of a shape that's useful to you. So for our shape of data, maybe in my case, I just care about the quantity on hand. So as events start occurring, well, we started with zero, but then we had 10 items were received so we can update our current state to 10. We have more product received, I can update it to 15. We had some shipped out, I'm reducing it now to nine. We did that inventory adjustment. Now we magically found 50, so I can update my current state to 59. But that's the shape I care about. So I'm doing this computation, pre-computation, as events occur to record current state. So that means that when we need to do composition, we don't need to hit our event store and look at all those events at runtime to figure out the shape of data, say the quantity on hand. We don't have to figure it out at runtime, like I was illustrating earlier, but because we've already done all that computation, that pre-computation and set our read model current state, kind of in the shape of data that we need, for example, just the quantity on hand, I can go get that. I've already figured out what it is as the events occurred. So what I'm trying to illustrate is that you're using events as a means to notify other parts of your system that something occurred. And that something occurred that maybe they need to update their data that they have about, for example, the quantity on hand or whether something can be shipped, et cetera. So you have all that data that you were trying to get in the first place in some 
consolidated spot, you have every all the data that you need in some uniform way that's meaningful to you that you can do that composition in kind of a simpler way. So let's say we have new product that was received within our warehouse for that stapler. Well, we can be publishing an event to a topic on our message broker that product was received. Our catalog service could then be a consumer listening for that event, consuming it. So what it does is it reaches out to its database and it has Say using a document store, it has the data related to the price, the name from various services. One of them being it cares about the availability from the warehouse. So it's that we receive so much product, maybe can make a determination at that point based on the data in the event to realize, okay, we can now change this to high, uh, our availability. And then that way in our UI, we can use that some meaningful way to say, yes, we can ship that out to you tomorrow, whatever the case may be. But you're making a decision based off that. But that data is kind of, Again, it's you're changing the shape of the data. You're not doing all of this at runtime. You're pre-computing this so that when a request comes in that you need to do visually in the UI, you have all the data you need in the catalog. So what this did is got us back to that simple mode that we were after, which is when a request comes in from our client, we can just reach out to our internal database and we can get all the data that we need within the database. Whether it's that single document that I was illustrating, maybe you have it in a relational database, so you gotta do some joins there, but everything's in that simple mode that you're kind of just, I just want all, of the, all the data within my local service to be able to fulfill the request. But this came at a cost. One of the trade-offs with this method is stale data because really what you're doing is you're keeping a local cache copy of another service's data. And it could be stale, more stale or longer then if you just were to call every service, do that composition, by the time you do that composition or return it back to the client, yes, it could already be stale. However, if you're using kind of this pre-computation of using events, what happens if for some reason an event doesn't get published or you fail to consume an event? Now that the, you, the data that you have isn't necessarily even stale, it's incorrect. The solution to that, which contains more complexity, is to kind of have a checkpoint where after a certain period of time, you go and fetch directly from the source, whatever the, the service is that has that data, to get it at that point in time, update your data, and then again, kind of use those events kind of as a change set to know that update your data when they occur. But then periodically, you still have to go do this because you're really never fully sure, do, does my service actually have the latest, most correct data? But as with all things, it's not one or the other. It's not like you have to do everything this way or do no composition at runtime. You can use which mode suits you best. For me, in my experience, when you have volatile data related to kind of transactional information, like for example, receiving a product, that might not be the greatest place. Or maybe it can work depending on how the volume of what those events that are occurring. So it's not that you just have to pick, okay, I'm gonna do this composition, pre-computation ahead of time, always for everything, every part of my system, and I don't wanna do any runtime composition. No, it doesn't need to be that way. What I, again, what I find is that pre-computation stuff really helps if the data, one, uh, isn't volatile, doesn't really change that often, or two, you're kind of at the life cycle, the end of life cycle, of some type of data where you really want to use it and build all this data for more reporting purposes where you know okay this particular thing it's not going to change at this point or very unlikely to change at this point so i know that i can publish an event that some other consumer can then use kind of as it's a finalized state it really depends on your context imagine that so whether you do that computation at runtime hitting different services or whether you're using events or a combination of the two realize that you still have all this coupling there because you have to, to do that composition of course, get in the comments and let me know how you're dealing with this, kind of what your solution has been, what platform that you're using. Get in the comments, because this is probably one of the most common questions I get related to when data is in different services, is how to deal with composition. So get in the comments and let me know what you're doing. And thank you to everybody that supports my channel and that's joined my channel. Links in the description and how you can join if you want to support my channel. And also get access to a private Discord server where you can ask questions, talk about topics like this. Links in the description on how to join. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.